Hello, 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 and welcome to another week of the Choker Bros podcast. This is Zachary Burrell, joined by Mr. Stuffy himself. Yeah, Sam Riley. <laughs> uh, you're not feeling uh, perfect today, right, Sam? But Yeah, my allergies are terrible, so I'll definitely have you lead the way. Uh, I am yeah. super stuffed. Nope, no problem. Sweet. I'll uh, have plenty of questions for you anyway, so I'll do it. We'll, we'll flip for this week. Uh, so we'll jump right into it because we're taking care of the uh, events portion in sam's new seven minute segment which if you haven't watched it for this week you should definitely go check out on our page uh we have it linked on we'll link in facebook below uh so boston recap uh you placed top 16 yeah yeah but but uh, unfortunately did not make top four uh how was the experience getting to top 16 uh, how was the event run uh swiss feel good were rounds nice and smooth uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I thought that everything ran uh, pretty quickly. Uh, we had a lunch break, which I didn't love because we had like four rounds and then we had a lunch yeah. break. Um, I think we had the, the Petite Cup too, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, no, there's definitely, they try to be nice with breaks, but sometimes yeah. it's almost too much. <laughs> yeah, I'm just used to like GPs where I play like eight rounds of standard and then like, then right. you go get dinner, you know? It's you the crucible, see. yeah, yeah. <laughs> where you're just like thrown in, you just grind, 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 and then go home at night. Um, so yeah, uh, did you, so one of my main questions and my main curiosity is about the event, cause I've played, I mean, I played in Kansas, which is out of state. Uh, and there's definitely kind of a different vibe there than there is in our locals or even in like Orlando or something. Did you notice any major style differences in the different regions? Cause I know you played against Okimoto who eventually won the event and yeah. he is one of the more well-known players from California. I think everybody is kind of aware of that at this point. Um, play styles. How did things were they different? Was it similar, just competitive, or how did it feel? Um, no, it felt it felt about the same as like your locals. I mean, you have uh, Akimoto who plays uh, more of the upper skill. Obviously, like he's very very good, um, mm-hmm. and you have some other people who who you know are a little bit newer at the game or don't take it as seriously. Right. Um, I, like if you watch Akimoto play, um, he played much more meticulously, uh, much more conservative conservatively um right then you know then what i'm used to seeing other players do i myself play a little bit more towards that style the the one play mm-hmm. i saw where he was where i was like oh i think that's too conservative uh is actually the play that ended up losing him game two against uh against andy ironically um, okay so like the one time he 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 like looks over and he says you know sometimes you just gotta play to win right and it proceeds to lose the game um, <laughs> but you know, know. yeah but but so yeah, I, I guess the difference is, is like when you when you get to watch someone like Akimoto or like uh, Max play, like they are playing a different game. You know, they are mm. they're playing a slower game. Um, they're 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 making uh, much better use of their individual card choices, their cards. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, kind I have more say- magic play style, right? Like coming from magic, where every card really matters, and you have to make it get as much value out of that one card as possible. Uh, that doesn't happen nearly as much in this game, but uh, you're saying that uh, some people kind of take it more that route. Yeah, I don't know. I think that it does happen, I guess, in this game. Um, mm-hmm. To me, I think like individual card choices actually matter even more here because you don't get right. a game two usually. Uh, you don't have a sideboard, mm-hmm. so if you discard like a Minwoo, like that sort of <laughs> yeah. thing. I, mean, I watched uh, Akimoto hold on to a Shantoto uh when he really he was very tempted to Shantoto on turn two, he deliberated this for about three or four minutes. Oh jeez! Um, and he held on to that Shantoto until he really needed it. Uh, ironically, I, he never ended up needing it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, took, yeah he, t- he just took some damage from Malua and then eventually overcame it. But if you discarded it, you know he would need it the next turn. So oh yeah, yeah, works. of course. <laughs> right. Although he he didn't he ended up drawing both of his Shantotos. Um, oh jeez, there you go. Yeah. Oh, he's only playing two. Probably he's Star playing Sibble. two. No, no Star Symbol. Um, oh, really? So not even a way to search it. Right, right, right. No. Um, just more of a like an aggressive in your face style deck. Um, the I have the list up here for the people that are watching. The card that you can't see is Sid Reigns at two. Uh, but yeah, just just more of an aggressive style. Yeah. So I I wouldn't say that like the different styles. Like I I would say like the biggest the biggest concern that I have with the game in general is that like. Mm-hmm. 30 minute time like i would love to see like yeah. 35 minute time right um, sometimes those five minutes will completely change yeah, yeah yeah and you know uh you know 
JB once made a post about how you should like never feel bad about calling a judge. Um, mm-hmm. But like I would say more than half my opponents played at a pace which I thought was like a little bit too slow. I didn't feel like they were slow playing, like they weren't doing it on a purpose, but right. I felt like carefully that turns into on a thirty minute clock. They were, like they were nervous, yeah. And, and the games were close and I can't I can't necessarily blame them, but um right. Yeah, I, I call a judge and I feel bad. You know, and, and of course every one of them got defensive. And I can't I can't necessarily blame them. Like I'm right. not calling a judge because I, you know, try to be a jerk. I just think that the game is not moving at a reasonable pace. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that that's my big concern right now. I think that 35 minutes, I think that the extra five minutes is actually kind of a big deal. No, absolutely. I mean, every minute counts. You get to those last few turns where you have, like, you see four minutes on the clock and you start playing in, like, lightning speed, just trying to get the game over, but then your opponent's not on that same page, and they, <laughs> it's frustrating. Um, I'm not going to call anybody out on that one, but happens. Uh, so right, yeah, you talked sure. in your seven-minute uh, recap about uh, some of the – top 16 uh kind of gripes like you wish that deck lists were shared uh, yeah, you think that'd do, be an yeah. improvement to the event because some people were streamed some were not yep. so deck lists were a lot more available in some matchups that maybe could have been you know a deciding factor in those games to get to top eight yeah for sure four. uh were there any other changes like that or structural differences or logistics that you think could be improved upon for future crystal cup or other uh highly competitive events for this game um you know, not off the top of my head, and I, and I do want to be clear and say that, like, those are small gripes, you know? Um, right. Those are small gripes, and, and the big picture of the thing is that uh, Square Enix ran a hell of an event. Right. Uh, it was amazing. It looked excellent. I, yeah. yeah, it was. It was absolutely, like, well run. I thought the break zone did a fantastic job with coverage. I feel like their coverage is just getting better and better and better with every event, um, mm-hmm. which is natural. You know, the better they get, you know, the more the experience they have, the better they get. Right. So... My complaint about top 16 list is just, you know, it's a small one. I think that, you know, it, it's very easy to, to implement. Um, now, do you, now, do you think that uh, coming from a background of, I, I'd say competitive magic, right? Like you played at a fairly high level. Like yeah. you used to travel for events. Do you yeah, think yeah. coming from that background kind of pushes you to like be more like magic? Or like if you didn't have that experience, maybe you wouldn't feel the same way? I think or... the game being like magic makes me want the game to be like magic. You right, know, like because, a lot of the yeah, rules and interactions most, are the same yeah. way. Um, so I, I just want it to be like magic. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and you think, it, yeah, okay. Um, I, yeah, I, so I, I, say, I, I don't, you know, I was going to use the word superior, but that's not what I mean. No, uh, no, I was no. Ask you, like, I want to yeah. use the office quote um, where, <laughs> where, where Michael Scott says, you know, I just want some of the credit and none of the blame. Um, I want all the good parts of magic and none of the bad. Right. And I think that Final <laughs> Fantasy is like, in my opinion, way better than Magic. Um, mm-hmm. It's not close, but there are some small things that you know need adjustment. Um, right. I know a lot of people are like pushing for like best of three, whatever. I I love I love best of one. I think it's great. I love that top I cut is best. Same, yeah, I, I think that best of three is is excellent for top cut. Um, I love that there's no sideboard. I love that you need to make those important decisions in deck building. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, my two my I guess my two gripes would be 35 minute time would be better for uh, my opinion. I do love double loss. I don't want that to change. I think that's actually right. really healthy for the game. Uh, and then I just want to see an equal playing field where like information is across the board. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, but those are, those are changes that could come. Who knows? Yeah. Right. I mean, that's a very simple change of, Hey, all right, we're just going to give out deck lists. We heard you guys from last time. We understand. Now we agree after talking about it and here you go. <laughs> right. Right. So and it's then, nothing and- like major. Yeah, and they might just decide that, like, uh, no, that's a terrible idea. We're not going to do that. And that's fine, too. Like, the game's sweet, no matter what. So uh, I, I'll bring this up real quick, then. Going on this uh, question of, you know, if shared information or information being more available, something I found interesting about the game, I agree. I, I don't like using dice to represent power because yeah. I think you should just be able to look at the board. And if anything, it hurts you because maybe your opponent will miss something and they'll misplay into you. You just got to be be your best self in your game. Make sure, sure. you're aware of everything okay, yeah. and let your opponent make a mistake. However, cards like Zidane or the new Thief backup that allow you to see your opponent's hand or Sid Palandina, right? You can look at their hand. Yeah. If you don't have a very good memory, you can't make use of that information as effectively as if you could, oh, I don't know, write down the cards. But the game specifically says that you may not use a notebook to write down information. 
how how do you feel about that um i don't know uh memory is something that can be trained though right like oh, if, right. if if right. you really did have a bad memory and it was affecting your game you could train mm-hmm. to, like increase your memory like it wouldn't even be that hard you could spend 10 minutes a day and you could probably increase your memory by a lot if that right. was like a serious concern of yours mm-hmm. so i'm fine with no notes i'm fine with notes I'm fine either way as long as they, it's universal. Right now it is universal. Um, right. No notes. I did have an opponent um, pull out his notebook when he Zidane me and was going to take notes. Um, but, I mean, to his, to, in all fairness to him, it, he had done it to his last opponent who had called the judge and the judge said, no, you're allowed to. I found that out at dinner um, where they were like, well, what huh. they, they, they rule as far as the notes? Because we saw that you told him he couldn't take notes. And I said... Uh, they ruled that he couldn't take notes. Uh, the first judge had said, like, I don't know, I, don't, I think you can. And I said, no, no, go, go talk to someone, you know. You can't take notes. <laughs> talk um, to somebody that knows. Well, it's like, your manager. Yeah, so, I, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I don't mind. The, the problem is, is that uh, he was allowed to take notes the first time, whereas it, like, you know, like, right, if, if the judge right. doesn't know, they should, they should, in my opinion, just ask. You know, like, yes, I, yeah, I feel don't, like... Don't take, a, don't take an educated done. guess. Well, yeah. the game's like Magic, and Magic, you can take notes. Therefore, mm-hmm. in Final Fantasy, you can take notes. That's not the case. Right. As much as we might want it to be, all right, just port the Magic rules over. We all know. We don't all know. So. Right, right, exactly. Huh, yeah. Interesting. It, That's, it, not, I didn't hear about I would, that I one. would say that, I, mean, I don't know for sure, but my guess would be that less than half the people that play this game have played Magic. So, or, or play it competitively, mm-hmm. at the very least. So right, there's a very big difference fair between learning how to play know. magic and right. learning how to play magic. <laughs> right, right, right. All right, so let's move into some deck lists. So there have been a lot of events recently, uh, and we will. Do you want to talk about your secondary options for Boston first, or do you want to talk about some other? Sure, we we, we can go into those. Yeah, yeah. All right, sure. You get a, get a local stuff out of the way. Yeah, we. So. Uh... It looks like you had a mono lightning deck, and I think you talked about yeah, in another the, video how that was like you were stuck on that, like you were you were there, you were doing mono lightning, and then you kind of switched it. Yeah. So yeah. you want to talk about that? Sure. I mean, like this is my one my mono lightning deck. Um, it looks a lot like Andy Carmona's mono lightning deck. Um, yes, it does. <laughs> you know, like Andy Carmona's been playing mono lightning more than I have. Um, if I were to play mono lightning, this would not be the list I played. I would mm-hmm. 100% have three Eurangers and three Goblins. Uh, the Red Goblin. Oh, the Red th- Goblin. Interesting. Yeah, I think to be able to... And a, a, a Zemus. I don't know what the heck this deck doesn't have Zemus in it for. But like, <laughs> I have definitely learned to respect Zemus since uh, his release. I thought he was just not impactful enough because he would just die. He's, in, he's just a vanilla 8k when you play him. He doesn't have anything else very special going for him. But that ability, if if they allow you to do that, yeah, okay, locals. My opponent didn't see it. It was his like first or second like actual event, and he had just learned how to play the game. But he had like yeah. what looked like Andy Carmona's mono lightning list, and he he missed a line where he could Zemus in lightning to dull a guy, do something to use an active. Like he had this whole cool ch- like I was dead, but I yeah. didn't scoop. Yeah, and he didn't kill me. Mm-hmm. He yeah. didn't see it. So but, I, uh, so it's a it's a Lua to me that makes the Zemus so strong. Um, mm-hmm. not just because. All right, so the, on one hand, you can wait till you draw another Lua, and then Zima sent the Lua to special her, which is kind of right. nuts. Um, oh, because Zima's active. Oh, activate Zima. The Lua gets haste. Their guys are smaller. You can use you can use Zima again. Um, the year I'll sit or whatever. But that but that's not even the main use to me. The main use to me is that you have a Lua. Period. They have to answer a Lua. A Lua is right. really hard to answer without two abilities or Shant Toto. So, or combat. <laughs> yeah, well, sure, but you're not going to allow that to happen, you know? Right. So every time they answer a Lua, they're almost always completely doled out. Mm-hmm. So when they dole out, you just you activate your stuff, and then you drop your Zemus and say, well, do you have an answer? That's it. I could see a play, too, where if someone plays Zemus from hand, Illua special gives them haste and just, or even red mage give haste. I guess that's easier, but yeah, there's a lot of sweet stuff with Zemus. Yeah. I mean, and I think uh, Illua is uh, like the top three cards in the game right now. I mean, I think she's that strong and I think that her being this strong, not just makes lightning stronger. doesn't make specific cards, not just like, like uh, Zima stronger, but makes a whole synergy of the whole entire deck stronger. Like, right. you play a Lua, and they're like, okay, 
Exactly what you said. Like, I'm going to win through combat. Well, no, you're not. Because you're going to drop a four that's bigger than Delua, and then they're going to drop an Al Cid, which is exactly right. what they wanted you to do. I think yeah, a Lua or, on, a Lua or, on or, two Odin. is the strongest play in the game. Not close right now. Like, I don't a think Lua so. on turn two? Yeah. Yep. And the decks, I mean, this version's playing 12 three drop backup, or two drop backups, sorry. Uh, with a perfect curve into threes. I mean, you can go two on turn one and yeah. just like next turn play Illua and yeah. like Lulu or Illua Gramus go yeah. search Al Cid. So Gramus also searches Vaughn. Um, yes. And in your decks with Uraeger, Red Mage, and Goblin, Vaughn is insane. Um, so good. I think the, the, the more aggressive decks should consider Vaughn over the Emperor. Yeah, it'd be sweet for. Uh, I know some, like we were testing a. Uh, Lightning Earth deck that had Yuri Anger uh, with the uh, Earth Goblin and just kind of like that whole yeah, was it? I, Science, Science, sorry. Do I have one of those lists up here? I don't Unless... know that you do, uh, right. but it was... Oh, yes, well, you do, you do. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll move on to it afterwards. Let's, let, we'll, we'll move on from this deck. We'll talk about that list. We'll move on to okay. the, gold, the Gold Buds deck. Okay. Um, so, uh, Strongest Sword was one of my considerations, which I'm sure makes you excited. The problem with me playing Strongest Sword is, is one, I'm not an expert on it. Uh, I don't know. You can look over my list. You can tell me if you think it's bad or not. This was my initial list. Um, that being said, I just didn't have enough experience on the deck to feel comfortable. It's and, a weird deck, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we had three people. Um, and, you know, they had tested the decks that they were playing playing quite extensively. I don't think that they were, like, ready to buckle down and test, like, a, like... Like, when, when, when we went to Kansas, for example, when we showed up, we went to testing. You know? We went to right. testing. When we, left, when we left Friday or Saturday night, we went home and did te- it grinded, like, five or six hours. Yep. You know? <laughs> it was, like, 3 a.m. Yep. Yeah. So, like, I just didn't have that kind of time to put in to test this deck. You know, my, my teammates needed to sleep, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so I just didn't feel comfortable because I didn't have the testing. But I think this is a good... Good list going forward if you want to play. Yeah, no, I think Ramza seems sweet. insane. Gaddick seems insane, like in the Golbat shells. Yeah, any combination of yeah, Gadda. Uh, the only thing I want to see that's not in here, and it wasn't in my initial list either, was Wall, like the new Legend Earth Wall, because oh yeah, I mean I'm an idiot, obviously. Or, yeah, Wall should and, be and turning sure, off yeah. the experts. Yeah, Wall should be in here. Think Not about close. all the games you've watched me lose on Strongest Sword. How many of those games would have been different if even one less EX burst was hit? Well, I mean, like, Alfred, Alfred uh, wouldn't have top four. You, you would have had you know, three Chaos Walkers. Triple Chaos and a Yuna. <laughs> oh, it, it, I didn't even know the Yuna, too. Jeez. Oh, yeah, no. Like, chaos, Chaos, Yuna, blank, Chaos. Sure, yeah. I mean, Wall's obviously disgusting. Yeah, Yeah. so Wall would have completely, like, there that wouldn't even been a game. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is where? Right, because you want your Ingus to play your yeah. uh, like. I think it's almost too loose. There's only two Ingus, uh, two Gipple. You want that for a pushing later. Like maybe you can yeah. go down to one, but if it goes to damage, feels real bad. Uh, Raban, you need for this four base removal. So there, yeah. there's really no room, which is makes it hard. I don't know if you cut down two drops. We can talk about it later. Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, there's so many. Uh, the way I've been describing to people recently, there's so many good new cards for it, but the deck's not faster. Right, you know, the deck I'm... hasn't. It, it can't kill people faster. It's just it has new tools. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this. Uh, well, one the deck could play a Lua too. Yes, yes, it could. Uh, but I'm gonna say this. This is gonna sound like blasphemy, but I think that there's a, an eventuality this will happen. The deck will either stop running Golbez or stop running Gilgamesh. I'm already eventually, to the point where I think Golbez is wrong. Yeah, eventually, that's... like yeah, eventually you're either forcing these Gilgameshes, which aren't good. Like you either want the strong sword one or the or, or none, you know. Um. Or you're forcing all these two drops when you could be playing sweet four drops. Right. So, I mean, I don't think we're there yet, but I think we're moving there. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I think, more, I think there'd that, be like, more free play effects. I think it would move towards ice at that point. Yeah. But so we'll, move, we'll move past that. I mean, it was a deck that I want to consider, but, you know, I just, that was the list I built. I didn't have enough time to test it. Um, mm-hmm. I did build a sweet uh, Earth, Earth, Water, Warrior of Lights deck. Um, yep. Yeah, man. That deck was You've sweet. been very high on this uh, Warrior of Light from yeah. Opus 2 to Legend. Uh, oh, Wall. I think the card's really good. Oh, yes. oh, and oh. Ashmal, like and I, had a, I had Warrior of Light signed by Gregory Cole, the Warrior Light himself. Oh, nice. <laughs> All three of my Warrior Lights are now signed by the man himself. 
So that's nope. that's all that matters. Definitely got a collection of unique signatures. That'll be sweet down the line. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this one of Hashmal. Uh, obviously, the you know ground level play is turn your guys into warrior lights. Yeah. Uh, you can also turn them earth right. for Ingus's effect. Uh, yeah. Are there any other main uses for it? Uh, it gives a thousand power for some reason to everything, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean the card's just good. I mean. Mm-hmm. By good, I mean it's like the best bad card of the deck. You know. Oh, I actually just realized it's Refia too. Ooh. Yeah. So you can just go either element. Yeah, you can direction. actually make a water to bounce your opponent's stuff. Like so, you could like during their second mid phase, make all your guys water, bounce like two of their guys, and then untap, and then you know. Yeah. Go to work good. or whatever. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So I. There's versions of the deck where you have Ultima and you want to you have Cosmos, and so you have to you mm-hmm. have to uh, assemble, you know, the Trinity. Of Ultima, right. Cosmos, and Hashmal, so you can turn all your guys into light, and then they don't all die. But like that's I don't know, that's living in the dream. You don't need that. Like Warrior of Light is just good by himself. Uh, he's better when you have Igus, Rafia, Buffin. Um, oh my goodness, I was playing the uh, Fire or not, not Fire Earth Wind deck you had shown me at locals the other day. Oh man, when you put down the the Warrior of Lights together. Like yeah. Wall, Ingus, yep. and Warrior of Light, the light version, which I think is this next deck, right? Yeah, let's, okay, let's, yeah, this is the next it. deck. Let's move to it. All right. Yeah, all right. So, the next this, deck. this deck is sweet. Thing. I love this uh, deck. Man. I love this deck, dude. Uh, I lost to a matchup I probably shouldn't have lost to. It was kind of disappointing, but it is very <laughs> powerful. Uh, I Did actually you, found myself my winning runner, more games when I was aggressive. Yeah. Uh, like, I would just throw down two dudes in Barts and just beat face. This, given... this, this was my front runner for Boston. Um, yes. Bart's being a warrior light is crazy. Yeah. Especially when paired with Wall, make him too higher, and now he's got first strike. He's got yeah. the damage reduction. He's got uh, haste, and I mean, if it's not super easy, I found to give him five jobs. You no, have and, to have... and in this deck, you're not even worried about that. Like, what right. you're trying to do is is get a big chateau on the board, make all your guys warrior lights, and then ping the board, and if they all take two thousand less. All your guys live. You can even Rydia. Uh, special mm-hmm. like all your guys. I are, thought that was sweet too. Yeah. <laughs> all your guys are gonna live. You're gonna wipe their board. Almost guarantee it. It's it's really sweet. Um. Yeah. Remind me. You know. Uh, hi viewers. Sorry about this little thing. Remind me to tell you about some secret tech for this deck later. <laughs> all right. Yeah. yeah it'll, it'll be good. It'll be good. I mean. So actually. And, and you know. You know. Actually, if you're watching this and you PM me, I will tell you the secret tech. Uh, ah, viewer. Only, <laughs> only, only. Only if you PM me. Yeah. Right. It, it so. Real quick about that, then actually, well, we'll talk about that after. I will talk about uh, events in between. So, um, our, you want to move on to the next list? Yeah, sure. So, uh, right. my my uh, my Florida list. Oh, this Flor is, yeah. stands for you know <clears throat> fire lightning. Fire this deck, lightning. Or, this deck is sweet. <laughs> yeah, this deck is sweet. Um, this was my second front runner. It was very, 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 very good at testing. And you know what? It beat Mono Ice. That was the call. It beat Mono Ice. Um, uh, Tello's pretty good against Mono Ice, I yes. hear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean... Rue is pretty good when you have a bunch of 6 7 Phoenix is ish. nuts against Mono Ice. 8 oh, killing their guy and bringing in a VV and killing another guy. Like, you could Phoenix hit in a Lua and then untap your guys during their turn. Or like when they go to Zalera at you. You can just Phoenix in a Lua and it's special and untap your, guy, <laughs> your guys. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did you do that once? And testing? Oh, a ton. Yeah. Oh, what a blowout. Yeah. Yeah, this deck has lightning cards, and that's why yes, I didn't, that's why I didn't play it. I'm just oh. I'm just not familiar enough with lightning cards. Um, and historically, I've done bad playing lightning. I there's definitely a chance I should have played this deck. Um, right, I like the I. Well, let me rephrase that. I love the combination of ranger with Ramu, like being able to just swing two K your board and then. Yeah. For one CP, kill your 9k. Like, that's insane. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think Ranger's actually really good. You can do the same thing with Royal Rightness, too. And a deck... And it's, and it's a 13 character for Lightning. Right. Wait, what is? Royal Rightness. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. Uh, also, a deck that has both Eldnarsh for Paradise with the Legend Lightning from Opus 4. That's an insane combo. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like... Just dull your entire you just, board. Your opponents just twice. don't know... That they're dead. That they're, you play the the yield, like you attack them with lightning. Then you play this the yield, immediately paradise, and then they just realize that they're dead. Yep. 
Uh, it's, it seems pretty good. I don't know. I, like if you already had the yield in play, you might even have the CP just to, like cast a phoenix, remove two threats, and then un activate your guys and then <laughs> take your second turn and kill them. Right. Yeah. Plus, you have a lot of haste threats out of the deck with uh, three red mages, three well, I, uh, three Aluas, three <clears throat> lightning. Do you have Gaddick in there to help? You have Belias. I mean, yeah. I was gonna say isn't everything haste strikes red mage, but you said that. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Amadar so, is kind of cool too. Those are, those are my two front runners, um, and then we have the deck that I probably tested the most, um, and pr probably my front runner for Kansas if I'm able to go to Kansas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this next week. I didn't uh... have enough testing to play it in Boston, uh, which is why I gave it to you, and you were nice enough to test it. So you could speak a little bit about the deck and, and how it ran for you. Uh, so one of my favorite things, which I was talking about earlier, I was getting a little ahead of myself, was. If you're ever behind in this deck, Alcid doing things with your Angers is insane. Like, I had a turn where I got stuck on backups, like, turn three. And my opponent had yeah. a guy that was, like, five. I think there was a Realm, because they wanted to, you know, get ahead and play my monsters. Yeah. I just went, Alcid, uh, p dulling two backups, pitch a Goblin. I'll sit into Yuri Angel, get the Goblin back, and then, like, I played Ramza and just plus 2k, made him 10k out of nowhere, and just blast, 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 and, oh. Uh, the deck is insane, honestly. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, it's, having it's so wall good. So alongside good. lightning cards, yeah. like making Illua exactly. When you AK. have the when you have like two of the best cards in the game, when you have three of the best cards in the game, no, when you have four of the best <laughs> cards, in the, cards game, in the game, when you have <laughs> Shantoto with Al Cid with freaking you have Shantoto Al Cid, Illua, wall, Illua, oh wait, Ramza. then you have Zima, Zimas and Ramza, like. The the threat density is very high in the deck. That's what I liked about it. I think, the, and you can threaten them paradise at any moment. They're just dead. I think almost I would say ninety five percent of my draws felt live. Right when I was playing the deck, I never felt like I was drawing. Sure, what's the worst? What's the worst card you could draw? Uh, like a dragon, an Alphanod, or an Alice After you already have it, on, well, there's only one Alice. Sure, so an yeah. Alphanod, right? Like, yeah. But at that point, yeah. And which, yeah those, which means you already have one. So. Because you were you were playing a different uh, deck right. that was similar to this, you know, the Wall Eel Narsh, whatever engine. It was Wind, though. In the same round, we both Paradise. The amount of times you have either Miner, if they made you discard it, you have Mog to go search it. Uh, you have Star Sybil to go uh, find it. There's so many ways to find Eel Narsh in the deck that if you just play a Mog early and you just play through your game and then just randomly you're like cards in hand, one <laughs> backups. All right. Attack, attack, yep. Fine. Take another turn, you're dead. Like, it's it's insane. Yeah, I think I think what people don't know, too, is that, like, sometimes your opponent's going to structure their turn during time uh, mm -hmm. to win during their turn three, and sometimes you're going to go on turn two, you're going to play an eel narch, attack them, and then take the turn three. Yep. And that's a huge, that's a huge deal, I think. Especially when you're a top eight, and it's sudden death. You know, right. like, Speed of the Steel, the turn with Paradise, I think, is going to be a big part of the future once we refine these Paradise lists. Yep. So, yeah, that deck is sweet. Uh, it has one of my favorite interactions in the game right now, too. Wall plus Ramza. Like, Wall oh, just yeah, enabling yeah. Ramza when you have two other guys. Like, it's so good. Yeah, I agree. So but I next, think everyone's kind of aware of that at that point. At so, the next point. list um, was Andy Carmona's. Uh, the original shell was Andy Carmona's. These are the changes that I made to it. Um, it looks like an Andy Carmona list. Yeah. <laughs> and this was what he wanted to play, supposedly. Uh, nobody thought that he was going to play anything other than Mono Lightning, including us, who he kept saying, yeah, no, no, I'm going to play Wind Lightning, or I'm going to play the Florida Fire Lightning deck. Dude, and we're when like, you were Come sending on. me all these lists and saying, oh, Andy's testing this, I'm like, dude, he's going to be back on Mono Lightning. Yeah. Yeah. He's so strong on it. And, yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I don't know, like, I don't believe in correlation and causation, you know that. So, like, I think a lot of people say, like, oh, well, obviously he top, he top eight it on Mono Lightning, so that was the right choice. Uh, well, not it's necessarily. It's possible he could have won on any of these lists, I don't know. Uh, the he, problem is, he's got kind of the curse, uh, for anybody who, I don't know, how, again, you said maybe less than half people know Magic. There's a player in Magic named Caleb Shear who, no matter what tournament or format he's in, unless it's standard during a weird time, yeah. he's playing Storm. Yeah. He's either playing... And Storm is a combo deck. Uh, it plays generally the same uh, within each format. You kind of know what to expect. If you see Caleb Shear against you, you know what list he's on. Whatever the best Storm deck is. Yeah. 
he'll still destroy people because he's just so confident on the list and he knows every line, yeah. knows exactly how to play the matchup. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of Anna Carmona with Mono Lightning. He knows the deck in and out. He'll outplay you. He'll play yeah. it perfectly. And there's nothing you can do about it unless you just really draw well and play perfectly also. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I agree and disagree. I agree. Uh, but I also think that this is kind of like what Mono Lightning does, right? Like, he's just playing right. the most consistent deck. There's a reason that Mono Lightning is the most played deck in every event. Uh, I don't know since what Opus, because I only started Opus 3. But <laughs> Opus 2 my was understanding like, is it was very good in Opus 2, yeah. Um, and it's the most played deck in every event, and there's a reason for that. The deck is very good. I mean, it's always good. And, you know, right. when you take Andy and you put him on a good deck, he's going to do well with it. Bottom line, mm -hmm. you know? Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, so this this was a front runner. Um, it was never a serious consideration for myself, I don't think. Um, it just... I remember you testing it. I saw kind of briefly yeah. you were talking about it because you were like, oh, Adele and Illa is sweet. Yeah, this whole deck is yeah. nice, right? Like Adele, well, yeah. Illa, Hildebrand, right. Lightning. Which is yeah, why so. it probably shouldn't have the three red mages. They're probably overkill. Um, yeah. But yeah, anyway. And then we so have then uh, Fire we Ice. Have the... Oh, I'm sorry. That's yeah, not no, the one I have. No, next. this one's Fire Ice. One. All right. This one is Fire Ice. Uh, it's a Fire Ice deck with two Vaughn. Has a lot of ways to give him uh, haste. Uh, Chris Adams played a Fire Ice deck. Um, I'm not sure if he was playing Phoenix in his latest edition. Um, if not, I mean, I think you should play Phoenix in every fire deck. <laughs> um, it was pretty good. Um, but honestly, like, my wife wanted to play Fire Ice uh, in local, so she wanted me to build her Fire Ice deck, so I did. Uh, and so I actually just considered it for the testing gauntlet, because it, it was testing pretty well. Uh, it seemed to beat the Ice Mirror. It was just faster <laughs> than... It was just faster... And probably um, a little bigger, right? Like, it has removal and no, forwards, no, and then, like, Vaughn's I mean, kind of big. It doesn't have Orphan, so... <laughs> That's true. I keep forgetting Orphan, man. Yeah, I orphan's, <laughs> orphan's a real card, man. Oh, and yeah, I keep forgetting Without that, to man. be spoilers, I'll tell you that Orphan was the best card in my deck. I played three of them against the Ice Mirror. It was nuts. And I played the Ice... I played against the Ice Mirror three, three of my seven rounds. Mm -hmm. It was insane. I played against Mono Lightning... Two of my rounds, it's the worst card you could ever hope to draw against Monolite. You never, ever want to open Orphan. Mm -hmm. Gosh, it's so bad. So, I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe three is too much, given the prevalence of uh, Lightning. So, but anyway. So, so, the next list I had was the Palimporum Sweetness. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, and, this is your version, though, with the... You have the deck list up? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't know if it's... I'll call it my version. It's definitely still Vince's version. <laughs> well, I was going to say... It does have Cloud of uh, Darkness. Cloud of Darkness. That's, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think maybe Vince, if he was playing the deck still, would be on Cloud of Darkness by now. I mean, I think it's just very, very good. I also have three Lenar. Um, <clears throat> I just wish it had room somewhere for Starter Garnet and the new One Drop Leviathan, because that was very good for me in my version of it. Yeah, man. But maybe, yeah, it's just not necessary. Yeah, and then, uh, <clears throat> shout out to Adam, who wanted me to talk about the updates to this deck, because um, he was considered playing it. I will tell you that the, the, the updates, I think, that are most vital to this deck's success are 4-drop Phoenix. Uh, being able to Phoenix in an Ephemeral Summoner, uh, or Lednar on, like, blocks, I think is nuts. Uh, mm -hmm. And I am playing a Garnet, as well as a 1-drop Leviathan, uh, a Fairy, and then I have... Cut the Vithans down to two, cut the Tonberries down to one, and I've like up the Bismarcks to three from zero. I think Bismarck is just insane. So. Bismarck's a very good card. Yeah. <clears throat> so those are the lists that I considered. Um, there's... All right. So do you want to look at now? There have been some events in regional, you know, significant events around the world. Well, right now I have. Let me let me go over real quick. I have uh, oh, okay, Max's Ma Max's uh, second place cool water deck. Um, okay. He's posted it now, so I feel comfortable sharing it. Um, this deck is freaking sweet. Um, mm -hmm. With the way of playing Kefka, sacking three things. A little interesting. I love the Porums in the deck. Uh, I, I think they're, uh, Which form is it? I haven't seen the list. He plays two of the one-drop Porums and three of the four-drop Porums that he oh, okay. burst. Um, <clears throat> just like that kind of filter. He's played three Ar he plays three Artemisian, three Marrowweb. I mean, his deck is just like flying through cards very quickly. So that's like the I built a deck. I think it was called uh, Mono Water Digging. Yeah, 
Uh, I was trying to do that, but or, uh, selection is what I yeah. put. The one card I would like to see changed here is I would like a Malboro somewhere in the list. Um, yeah, that he has he, he has a Fisher. I think Malboro is just so strong, um, mm-hmm. so especially when you can get it back at instant speed. Since Fisher does uh, get it back at instant speed, no, it has to be during your turn. Um, it has to be during your turn, but you can do it at any time during your turn. Yeah. So actually, maybe that's not as good. Yeah. All right. Maybe that's not as good as I thought it was. <laughs> uh, oh, I think Max's list is the coolest deck to come out of the the Boston. I mean, it's. I would not forego Shantotos. I would still be playing Earth in his list. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if he was playing Earth, he would have won the finals. Uh, but maybe he wouldn't have made finals. Maybe his list is just way right, better. That's, that's always how it goes. Yeah, right? it's definitely possible. Yeah, if they won he, this, they would have won the game that they lost. But right, yeah, yeah. So like the other games, he could have used Santos in all of the matches actually that I was watching. That being said, he piloted very well through those uh, games without them. So I think every game I watched him play, he was on six damage when his opponent was on zero, and then he won. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's just what Cognoso does, right? Right. Cognoso is Cognoso sometimes. And somehow always times out to be when you take that sixth point, you're like, gotta draw it. Well, there it is. A lot of times, honestly, you play to that. You know, you, you want to build the biggest board possible to play around any sort of, you know, you, you at least want to get that clear out and play before you go for that Cognoso play. Right. Yeah. So next I have Jonathan's list uh, from top four. Um, the, the highlight here is that he's playing uh, three Titus. Uh, that's the highlight because if he had won the event, I had to play the, the, the bet was that I would play Titus for the rest of the season at every deck. Um, and I am a man <laughs> of my word. Yeah, I'm a man of my word. Yeah, sure. But I, you know, I'm more likely to play mono ice, uh, play three Titus. I can devout one back into play. I can discard one to use a special, uh, so you have three Titus split ace. Let's go. Yep. It's possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, had he won, you know, I, I that would have been fine with me. I, I wouldn't have been too sad. Uh, <laughs> AKA, I would have been, been very fine. happy. I would have been very happy for him. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah. So, but you know, that being said, you know, I, I correlation and causation again. I don't think that Titus is the right call for this deck. Um, right. But you know, he, he liked it and he did well with it. Um, very well. I, you I mean, know, you'll you'll have to check. Five. Yeah, you'll have to check out uh, his his uh, deck recap to see what he, changes he would make. Uh, I don't want to talk for Jonathan. He's a very excellent player. Um, the, the one change I would probably make if I, it wasn't the Titus is I would up the Bismarck to three. Bismarck is a good card, y'all. So that's, yep. that's probably what Even I would Even with sure. the change and change in rulings. <laughs> yeah. But. So uh, next we do have the <clears throat> Netherlands tournament up. Um, sure. Well, you have is, that one. I, okay. oh, I'm sorry. No, I do have this one. I couldn't find the New Zealand li- link, so I'll, okay. I can try that while you're talking about this a little bit. But uh, oh, mono lightning. Uh, hmm. Mono lightning. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Exodus is a heck of a card. Uh, you know what Exodus kills? A Lua. So. It, it does. That is an accurate statement. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I, looks, like I think this like deck a streamlined just, version. This looks like Andy Carbono's list if he added Behemoths. And yeah. Odin's, I guess I don't know. And just took out the, Emperor. The, maybe, the most, yeah. maybe the most interesting uh, add addition to the deck is a three Odin three drop. That's interesting for sure, right? Sure. Well, four drop. Oh, I'm sorry. No, there is a three drop yep. Odin too. Yeah. Oh. But no lightning. Like no lightning to take advantage of the lightning specials. Well, you don't have to. You don't lose to uh, Marlboro. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. I guess the deck actually doesn't have like a great answer to Marlboro other than. Than that. Other so than any not... of the Odins or Nexodus or something, yeah. Sure, yeah. I mean, those aren't even great answers because, like, you don't want to lose your Lua. Um, I mean, for the for the Exodus part at least. But, right, yeah. right. So that that's what won there. Um, in for Germany, sure. we had Mono Ice win. Um, mm-hmm. If I recall right, does this card deck not have any Opus Five cards in it? So maybe, yeah, this deck had no Opus Five cards. Oh, the Kre- Krefeld Regional. Well, here, let's. Uh... Yeah, Germany. Uh, looks like none of the decks have Opus. Yeah, five so it's cards. very possible that this event, the rules in Germany are so that you can't use Opus Five yet. That Which, appears to be. Well, what was the date of the tournament? It was, it, it oh, was, it was on, on the first, so th- it was released. Huh. Yeah, it is interesting. So <clears throat> take that for what it's worth. There was, you know, I don't know. We'd have to ask someone uh, from Germany to know more about that. Yeah, I'm not familiar. Yeah, no, the no Opus Five cards. And then huh. Barcelona, which uh, had 27 participants. Do you have that one available? I do. Uh, so that one had Mono Earth. Yep. Um, 
Ooh, Maybe there's a first. Fi Final Fantasy VII deck, Earth, Fire, in second place. Yes. Uh, so this first place list had one wall. I have to believe that the guy only owned one. I, 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 I remember you saying that from your recap, yep. <laughs> I, you know, and I, I just, I think that wall is just so No Ingus right either. Yeah. No new but, Ingus. Right, but there are there are five cards because you see the star symbol there. Star symbol, the, minor, the graviton, yeah. mog. Yeah, huh. it's an interesting Doctors. list. It is an interesting list. It wow. looks like he does not want to lose to. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's the wrong Yang. Never mind. I was gonna say he does not want to lose to Ice because to, to be fair, to be fair, that Yang is also Yang. that Yang is also very good against Ice. Like mm -hmm. going going, uh, you know, Yang Ursula on turn one against Mono Ice is a very good way mm -hmm. to win. Uh, yes. In fact, I believe that was Akimoto's loss in Swiss was to turn one uh, Yang Ursula. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah, because so you have to, you know, take yeah. your beats for a while because you're not going to block favorably for a long time. And then, so finally, uh, I have the Masters uh, up. Um, I we talked about it in last week's podcast, but I didn't. I wasn't able to post last week's podcast. Uh, one because I wasn't feeling well, and two, I had so much testing to do, and we had to. Well, and there were Boston. technical difficulties too, right? A, oh my gosh! So, back and, yeah, yeah, so much happened. Uh, so we did talk about last week's, but <clears throat> Mono Ice won that event. Um, with well, three playing. orphans, right? Three yeah. orphans, yeah. Three yeah. orphan, one Zed or Zade. Yeah. Uh, the so, oh, that's the card I was playing card. that was really good to Zade. That was in my deck, and it was very, very good. You get With off Star Symbol. Yeah, you get you get it off Star Symbol. Uh, you can pump it out of Alcid Rage. Um, yeah, it was good. You can tell that they respect Golbez there with that mid deck Shadow Lord. Shadow Lord, yeah. <laughs> and the three Zelair. Like, they're not playing around with no Golbez. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, Japan historically has had a lot of Golbez, right? Like, they're, they're someone exactly always why, a sweet Golbez That's exactly list. why you have that up there. They also have a lot of Fasoya decks, and this top did not disappoint with uh, not one, but two Fasoya decks. They have a Mono Water mm -hmm. Fasoya deck, which is sweet. It used the Garnet uh, starter combo to go get the mm -hmm. Moogles and the Bismarcks, um, which is cool. They had a Water Lightning Fasoya deck, um, which, you know, yes. typical, right? But, but, but it had Drace, which was the most was interesting. Say, yeah, they have Drace. Because what? it played the six-drop Larsa. Yeah, right. So, yeah, I thought that was I super mean, I guess, yeah, you pitch your extra copies of things you don't need anymore. Yeah. If you draw an animation later, like, sure, play Larsa, draw some cards. Yeah, so... Drace uh, is a one-drop 8K. It is a one-drop... It, it's it's basically a Galbraith. Right? It's a Galbraith. It's so, pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I like I mean, that, I like that. These lists are all pretty cool. Um, I will say, you know, I'm disappointed... Not just in myself, but in everybody else that we haven't seen more creative lists coming out yet. Mm -hmm. like, come on, guys. We could do better than this. Well, I feel like the Palinporum deck's pretty creative. It is. Shout out uh, to Mitz. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, I guess the mono decks are all kind of what we expect. Uh, we talked about this in one of our other podcasts that also got lost in the Aether. <laughs> that happens a lot. That's my fault yeah. too, guys, by the way. Um. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's interactions that we know exist that are powerful. Like, where are the paradise have... decks? Yeah, like come Maybe on, take just a chance. Afraid, like they don't, they don't want to get blown out on that extra. It's like, but the problem is you, you don't, don't get blown out. Play so that you don't get yeah, blown out. Yeah, you don't get blown out. Like there's no there's blowing not. out. Like like when you lightning, you have another one to activate. You have a Lua to special. You have right. Zidane to take to take the card out of their hand. You know, you've cleared the way. Uh, yeah, I mean, myself included. Like I should have been more experimental. I should have played Mono Lightning with your angers and goblins. Mm -hmm. Like that was the right call, <laughs> but you know I didn't. I reverted back to like uh, uh, I reverted back to Chris's list, and then I took it one step further, and then I made a bunch of changes that made the deck worse. Right. So you know, don't blame Chris's list. Um, my my list was just garbage, man. Like uh, <laughs> I I I top sixteen out of luck in a firm grasp of making sure I held on to the right cards at the right times. That was right. it. Yeah. Hmm. Mostly the first part. Mostly luck. <laughs> um, I mean, it's all, you know, it's a card game. That's yeah, part yeah. of it. If, if you want to, if you want to ice earth deck, either play Chris's uh, original list, which I'm sure, uh, which I think is posted because he, he won his regionals, um, or play Akimoto's deck. Uh, Akimoto's deck is insane. Um, I know a lot of people get crap about the one ofs. <laughs> um, and yeah, some yeah, of like those, we have a, some we of have those, a local. Are fair, yeah. Some of those are fair uh, criticisms. Like, 
some of them is, you know, maybe should have been a, a two of or three of or whatever. You know, but yeah. Yeah, we have a local who loves his two ofs. He rarely plays three of a card unless the S ability is very important to him. He'll play two Sabin, two is that, VB. Is that Ian? Two, yes, two it's Zonde. Funny, it's funny you say that because I, I think I remember you saying that one time and I was like, man, why are you playing two VBs? Like, wait, why are you playing two Sabins? I don't, like, I don't understand the mentality. And then he has like other cards that are like, He'll play, like three dark his, Sephiroths. His definition of like, like he'll have a card for a yeah. matchup, right? But he'll have two copies and yeah. he'll take one out. I'd be like, just play three VVs and just play one of your bullet. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I mean, different strokes for different folks, but uh, sure, yeah. definitely is different style of deck building style for sure. Right. Yeah. So we don't have any major events coming up unless we can make it out to Kansas, right? At least left for Opus Five until Opus Six with Gen Con, correct? I can't think of any. Yeah, there's not. I'm going to try to go to Kansas because that's unacceptable to me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to play some more Opus 5. Opus 5 is freaking sweet. Yes, uh, it is. So what, uh, coming from, I mean, you've, you've ground out a little bit more than me in terms of terms. You've traveled to North Carolina. You went yeah. to this event. What uh, do you plan to do in between these major events to kind of keep your competitive edge? Like, obviously, we can play locals. Our locals are fairly strong uh, as far as locals go. So it's not like we're going to have easy competition or anything. But to keep yourself, you know, on that edge, is it going to be octagon testing with uh, or over the pond? No, or... I mean, I, I test very, very little. If I do test, I'm testing with Vince um, mm -hmm. from Australia um, or, or Nicholas. Uh, but besides testing with those two guys, um, if, if I'm doing anything, it's theory crafting. Like, I'm constantly chatting up uh, Joshka. I'm chatting up... <clears throat> Uh, Chris, I'm chatting up Vince, I'm chatting up JB, like, I'm, chat I'm chatting up Akimoto, I'm chatting up you, I'm chatting up, you know, uh, Angel, I'm chatting up James, you know, like, I'm chatting up everyone I can. Um, mm -hmm. Just information theory sharing? Theory crafting, yeah, like, I, I, I really believe that two heads are better than one. I think that the, I, 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 I like, so I expected uh, California's team to come with a, a unified deck. Mm-hmm. Um, instead of like one person playing Mono Ice, one place is playing Ice Earth, one place was playing like uh, Gary Cole was playing Mono Earth. Right. I expected them to do enough testing to break the meta. Um, I think that the teams are smaller than I thought, like testing teams. Uh, right. And I think that in the future, if if we want to have more breakout success, um, that that like two heads are better than one, four heads are better than one. <laughs> uh, but then you know also like. Obviously, you don't want too many because then your list get out. And right. But yeah, I think that in the future, like, I want to like get all these people that I'm talking to in one group and theory and deck deck uh, discuss in there. That'd be great. I know I talked to Akimoto. And I talked to Max about that forming a team and just kind of like building up a more competitive uh, edge. Um, right. Because I think that I, f I feel like that's a, like an important part of the future of Final Fantasy. I think that was kind of the. Teams point of Christopher Matiski starting that echo chamber group, right? For a competitive FFTCG, you have to, you know, ask to join and then he'll like add you or not. Uh, I think that's Maybe? where he, he intended it to be that, I think, but it kind of turned into just more of a forum where BS isn't tolerated. <laughs> I, I No memes and all that, unless it's emperor wait, memes. Ironically, I thought it was the opposite. Maybe I brought, I thought it was like they were sick of the policing of the other forums, so they I don't know. That's oh, a good hmm. question. I don't know. I don't know the history. Is the honest answer. different I interpretations? I guess I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I I mean like I'm not talking like 20 people deep. I'm talking like I think that like there should be a solid team of like six people mm -hmm. that are like you know testing very competitively. Um, and then I think like with those six people, you'll be you'll be able to break the meta. I think that there is a deck uh, just based on the power load of what we're seeing in Arctic right now and opens five meta. There is a deck that is broken, and we haven't found it, right? Um, because we're not we're not trying hard enough. Is the honest answer. Interesting. Okay, so I think we should move to wrapping up. We've been talking for a while, rambling out about lists and stuff. Um, yeah, 40, we will... forty-nine minutes and seven seconds. <laughs> exact. It's one of the long ones. All right, so we'll uh, we'll move towards the end here. Uh, so one of my thought for the week: uh, Should everyone be expected? to know the CR, or the comprehensive rules. Now, this means oh, more than just, you know, the, the, what's on the little pamphlet. And you should generally kind of know, like, we're very active on the Facebook page. 
So yeah. we see all these rulings questions. Sure, yeah. We see all this conversation. We're like, oh, yeah, of course, there's on this ruling thread shared by Kageyama's Twitter, blah, blah. I mean, we're aware of all this, but not everybody is. And that's acceptable. Like, not, You don't have to be on Facebook 24-7 reading every post in the f- U.S. groups like we do. W- at what, like how, what, what's the extent that should be expected of the average player to understand the rules? Because there's sometimes there's just feel-bad moments at like locals or something where someone's not aware of a ruling. Like yeah. I actually think one of our locals, he got really tilted one time uh, because I had to explain how the Barbarisha phone was three-worked. Sure, yeah. And he got blown out, like entirely blown out. And I explained it to him. He didn't believe it at first, looked it up, confirmed it. Yeah. And he has not played the game since. It's been months. Uh, I don't think it was just because of that. He just kind of yeah. got into other games and stuff. But like he was very, it was a very feel-bad moment. Yeah. Examples like that, I could see pushing people away. But at the same time, it's like rules are rules. And I'm okay with not knowing them. And, when, and if I get blown out, I learn from it. But some people don't have that mentality. Like, where, where do you think, where do you fall on that? So... I will say the two people that I know that know the rules the most, uh, besides myself and yourself, um, is Max and Chris. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen both of them not know the answer to a rules question. I've seen both of them make mistakes. So, the, 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 the answer is that if you are playing an event where there is prizing, I think that yes. you should be expected to do one of two things. Know the rules or accept that you don't know the rules. That's it. That That's perfect. Exactly. Yes. Like that's where I believe like it. they are available for everybody. They're on the website. If you care enough, you can take the time to go read them. That's not required. Or be crazy and print them out and put them in a, a nice little folder. Like yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but And I understand that people don't want to take time to read them all. But sure. you they're, have to accept what They're happens. not even that long to be fair. I mean, compare them to magic. No, they're, they're, they're not that bad. <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah, um, I'm curious what uh, other people think though. Cause I know, yeah, I don't know some of these, you can kind of be in that, you know, kind of snooty. Oh, well the rules are all available. So I don't need to keep asking judges. You can just go answer yourself. It's like, yeah, but okay. people, you know, sometimes need a little extra explanation or whatever. And the, just kind of like the logic of it. It's almost like a philosophy paper. Like you have to kind of, hmm, the premise is this and then going on to the conclusion so, and all that. I, I do want to be clear. I, I said when there's pricing involved, right. I didn't say when there's cash involved. I didn't say when you're at the Nationals. Um, so, if you're playing me and you discard the road card for CP, um, and it's not the right color, and you can't do that, uh, that's an illegal move. We're going to take that back. You know, like, we caught it, no big deal. If you do that, and you decide, like, oh, I should have discarded this, like, mm-hmm. I'm going to hold you to what you discarded. And the honest answer is I expect you to do the same. Right. Um, but... Because I, I think that what, what's happening is I, I, had a, I had a match at the, the Ivalice tournament where um, my opponent discarded the wrong card, and then he was like, oh, you know what? I'm actually going to discard this. And it was that live was on, on camera, right? On camera. Yeah, and I'm like, I saw oh, I'm sorry, man. You, you already discarded that. We're going we're gonna to keep it the way it is. He was upset. Um, mm-hmm. He handled it way better than most people handle it. So mm-hmm. prop, props off to him. Uh, but he was upset. Um, I didn't want people coming after me and saying I was messing with the integrity of tournaments, all that stuff. Um, yeah. But the you say they is, didn't want to know the witch hunt. Uh, but, yeah. but, but the honest answer is that, like, I, I do believe that everything should be on equal footing. I don't want him going to his next tournament and also thinking he can take back rules. Right. Just can't. Um, or, like, like, a classic example is, like, say someone has, like, backup Aerith, protect you from uh, targeting by backups, right? Yeah. And someone plays a unit H, and is like, bounce your guy, like, can't, or can't bounce my guy. It's like, oh, okay. I don't want to do that because I don't want to bounce my own guy. It's like, sorry. Like, it's a legal sure. play. It's just not with the result you intended. And I... Correct. You learn from it. Uh, Correct. You take the... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, so... I, 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 you know, at locals, I feel the same way. Mm-hmm. When a, an opponent makes a mistake, um, you know, that... that them the beats. You know, I don't tell you. Them the beats. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, There's, at, there at are the times when someone's like, oh, you can take it back. I'm like, no, listen, man. I got to... Like I, if I'm gonna make this mistake, I need to have the impact of yep. the mistake hit me, so I remember it next time. Because if I just take it back, I'm probably not gonna remember it for next time. Right. The like, oh, only you know. time that I allow take backs is when I'm testing with Angel, and or when there's new players. Like sometimes, it, like that, uh, the Lightning player I was talking about, he did something earlier that like he completely didn't realize how something worked, and I'm like, all right, I get it. It's like your first thing, or whatever. You can take it back, and we'll. But that's like a local. That's not a cash tournament or anything. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. And, and that's where so you know I I don't I don't disagree with you. Uh, I do it once. I only do it once for and it's only if it's the first time. I think it's a net <laughs> positive. So it's a negative for the game. It is a positive for the game. It's a negative for the game because they're getting used to this. Other people are seeing you do it. People shouldn't go back on rules. That but. In this one exception, you are allowing a new player to True. to learn and experience the game and get to play the game and to move forward. So that is the exception. Is you're gonna, you know, not everything's black and white. You need to weigh the odds. Uh, the thing, uh, I will say that in the Cards of Evil East tournament, you know, Grace Grace was fairly new at the game still. Congrats to her for for doing so well there in the top eighting. But she was fairly mm-hmm. new. She made a mistake uh, when she like assured, thinking that like it was gonna like prevent the damage. It wasn't, so she took it back. And we're playing in a cash tournament. We're playing with top top eights on the line. Uh, in fact, this wasn't top eight. I was playing her in top eight. We're in game two, and I and I did let her take it back. So so yes, there are there are instances where like you know like I'm gonna bend the rules. She's a new player. I didn't want the match. I didn't want the match determined by that mistake. Right. Um, I thought it was a net negative. For her, I thought it was a net negative for the community, um, for her to, to have made that mistake. And I just wanted the match determined by, you know, who... I, I would say play better, but yeah, you know, you, you see what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, yeah so, the, that's the thing. There's that there's that delicate line of there is a line. Yeah, what's I, too much and right. what's, you know, game integrity. So, so yeah, that's my thought. Uh, yeah, so I'd love to hear what other people think, too. Just to sure. reiterate, uh, should everyone be, or to what level should people be expected to know the com- comprehensive rules? Yep. Ob- uh, difference between locals, competitive, whatever. Uh, share your thoughts. We love interacting with you guys. Uh, yeah. Leave messages, PM us about it, whatever you want. Uh, I, yep. I think we both love talking about rules, honestly. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah dude, I, lo- right. I, I love learning new things that allow me to do better later. Yep, so... So yeah, sound off in the comments. Yep. And uh, you have any other thoughts? I don't. I, I want to say thanks for bearing with us. Um, you know, mm-hmm. we've had a lot of events coming up. Uh, I've been very, you can tell by my voice, uh, I've been very sick. Uh, so the, the lack of content is definitely on my fault, not on my team's fault. I will also say that like the reason you're not seeing me on stream right now is because I, I have snot running down my face. You guys don't want to see that, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, but, but thanks for bearing with us. Uh, so I, lately, I've been getting a lot of PMs about the, our content and like i just want to say that th- those things mean the world to us um mm-hmm. so keep that up guys I, I super appreciate it yeah well thanks for joining us for another week of the choker bros podcast uh this is zach burrell i'm, I'm sam riley or also known as sam's night prime and <laughs> we'll see you next week see you guys later